It is Fitzy and Weber with Kate Ritchie for your Thursday. Now, do you know what? This is really interesting. Wedding photographers have got together because they've been to so many weddings, Kate, and they've worked out the telltale signs if a relationship is going to last. Okay. And which is the interesting bit? Well, well... <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm with well, you. Yeah, I'm yeah. with you. They're watching body language. They They're up front. Yep. They can see husband and wife yep. or They're husband given... and husband. You know, I think everyone plays this game. When you go to a wedding, when you sort of know someone, but you don't know them fully well, I think you all get together and go, how long do you reckon this is going to last? Yeah, I don't think she's into him. Yeah, well, we've got the signs for you in the podcast. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. You know what everyone else was talking about yesterday, Fitz, was the demise of fantails. Oh, yeah, that was huge. Yeah. I, I had a lot of people, when you brought that up yesterday, I had a lot of people blowing up at me at footy training last night as well. Why? Well, just saying, it's ridiculous. I mean, that's a staple. It's an Australian staple, and now uh, they're taking it away. Yeah, since 1930. And I thought you were being a bit cynical um, when you thought that maybe it was a bit of a publicity stunt. Because yeah. if you come out and you talk about an Australian favourite and say people simply aren't buying them. We can't afford to fix the the gear or the machinery that makes the lollies. Yeah. I mean, even that sounded a bit loose, yes. didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Around yeah. a reason why um, fantails, you might not be able to get them anymore. Um, but I don't, it turns out it's not just us that might think um, that this is a bit of a publicity stunt. It's a, there is a conspiracy uh, theory oh, now, go. of course, but in line with what you were saying, maybe um, uh, Allens just want people to buy them again. And it worked yesterday because yeah. the amount of people I spoke to who had bought a bag of fantails. Supermarkets were um, sold out of them and even um, a, a foodie foodie blogger, his name's Russ Eats. I don't, I don't know him. He was on Sunrise ta- talking to Natalie Barr and this is what he had to say about it. Well, they released it, which is a bit odd. Usually someone like me will find out through like a worker and then we'll like leak it, but they, mm. they said it, which is a bit odd. So maybe it's like, a, oh, we're getting rid of it if you don't buy more and it's worked. Mm. Empty boxes. I got the last three packs. I went to four Woolies and Coles. Empty boxes everywhere because people just like flocked to the shops to get the last fantails. See, this is a thing. And now they'll go, you know what, Australia, you've spoken. They're back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And all the people that thought they bought the last packets of fantails will be like, damn. Yeah, so stay tuned. I don't oh, think they're going anywhere. Good theory. I like that, Kate. Have you checked out whatif.com's top 10 winter weekenders yet? How good's the what if tip? Tweed Heads is in there, Lakes Entrance, Albury, Bendigo. Yeah, you better book your winter getaway on the what if app. What if? It's Aussie for travel. Let's talk about weddings because a group of wedding photographers have got together on the internet Mm -hmm. to share the red flags that they've spotted on wedding days. And obviously, they would, I mean, they would pick these things up. They see so many weddings, and photos are the big one. So the yeah. number one thing that they see is that they've had so many photos where she may be gazing lovingly at her, at her new groom, and he's staring like 10 metres right over her head. He doesn't want to look at her. At the bridesmaid. They've even had a bride and groom where they don't even want to stand next to each other. Wedding photographers say what we usually do is that we prompt couples, you know, for fun poses. Like, why don't you whisper some obscenities into his ear and you get that laughing shot or nuzzle into each other's yeah, neck? Yeah, there's the classics, you know, yes. the drinking the champagne yeah. or the, there's always the one where her he- head is on his shoulder yeah, that's, and he's, that's so he's good. feeling like the luckiest guy in the yeah. world or they're, they're jumping off the, you know, the bonnet of yeah. the car. Or he, he's holding a grape in the vineyard and she's laughing in the background as the sun's going down. Yeah. Aren't they just they're a bit of a pain those photos though aren't they? They go for ages because then you've got to get the families in and then you, oh, kids then are they're, screaming. They're really nice to look back on yeah, but I, I, I agree the, the photographers are the people that that is a, quite an intimate 
moment yes. with the bride and groom. They probably spend more time with the bride and groom than any of the guests yeah. because you know what weddings are like. You kind of spend two minutes with that person and five minutes with that person. Yeah. But the photographer can probably read a whole lot of body language straight up on a very important day. Of course. The other one is speeches. So wedding photographers say, I'll never forget the best man's toast of the groom. It was a shameless roast. He, he basically said, he, said, he spoke openly about the groom's willingness to have sex with anything when he's drunk. He then went on about how the groom's deadly gambling habit led to his short fuse and gets really angry when he loses. (laughs) Then he said, how many thousands of dollars in golf clubs have you destroyed or lost in countless ponds on the golf course? Oh, anger management. (laughs) Nobody was laughing, looked over, there was a tear in the bride's eyes and then wedding photographers, what they do, they get together and they give you how many months it's going to last. Oh, bet on. <laughs> I mean, to keep yourself <laughs> occupied, you have to, don't you? I'll give it 10 months. Well, there's a, there's a Facebook club for or group for everything else. Why on earth would the photographers not be getting together and swapping stories? What are the signs that you picked up on the wedding day? 13, 20, 14, give us a call. Benny and Cronulla's given us a call. What was the wedding confession, Ben? So the, they got married under the Harbour Bridge. Uh, the reception was in Luna Park. Beautiful. He spent a bomb on the wedding. And every time I went to the bathroom, I stood at the urinal next to some other family member or friend that was like, what a joker, what do you think? And I was like, wow. Oh, no. And uh, within, within six weeks, they were done. There was confessions that they kept the strippers at the, uh, oh. the hen's party. Oh. And, yeah, <laughs> came out that she'd been cheating on him before the wedding even. So oh. Oh, no, he's no. just finished paying the wedding off after about two years. But I guess he, at least he's done with her. So, I suppose so. So, Benny, we, Kate and I were just talking about this as well. In that situation, you get angry because you've just bought them a wedding gift as well. Do you ask for that wedding gift back after six weeks? Nah, mate. He, he was a great friend and he just bought her a couple of French bulldogs and they oh. shared Siamese cats and she took the cats and wanted the dogs. Messy as, but oh. I guess, again, at least he's out of it. Well How done, awful. Benny. Is that where you get all the gossip? I mean, I've never stood at the urinal, yeah, so yeah. is that like the water cooler, yeah, is that's it? Where, you know, we, where all the best chats happen. Well, do you know Sir Donald Bradman refused to go to the urinal? And he had um, one of a, one of his ex teammates used to tell this story, but the reason why they used to get stuck into him, going, "Oh, you're too good. You go into the cubicle. You got to be away from everyone." And yeah. he said, "Well, the only reason I do it is because every time I go to the urinal, I always have someone next to me that turns over and goes, oh, Sir Don,' and goes to shake his hand." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Andrea in Parramatta, what was the wedding confession, Andrea? Uh, good morning, guys. So it was my own wedding, um, and I pretty much did nothing but fight with my husband all day. Oh, no. I said to my dad, Dad, I don't want to do this. And oh. then apart from saying our vows and um, taking our photos, I spent my entire wedding away from him. Oh, so how long did it last after that, Andrea, before it was <laughs> totally over? Um, I, I gave it a, a two years and that was it. Oh. I filed for divorce. Like, I tried to hold him, but yeah, it was not going to work. Oh, Andrea, was. but why did you even get to the big day anyway? Why didn't you pull the plug? I mean, it's easy for me to say, but why didn't you pull the plug before you got there and spent all that cash? Yeah, look, there, there was there's personal reasons yeah. behind mm. it. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't great. But, um, look, it is what it is. Yeah. And, um... You know, everyone just kept saying to me, this is just wedding dinners, like it's normal. And I was like, no, this isn't normal. So, yeah. Um, you know, plus I had kids, you know, it's that mum guilt course, kind of thing. And yes. you're trying to keep your family together. But, hey, it is what it is. I had a great time with my family. So. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great hey, party. You know, <laughs> it you... was. That's exactly how I see it, an expensive party. Have you found love since, Andrea? Uh, no, unfortunately not, but that's okay. I love my kids and my kids know everything and I'm currently in uni studying to be a midwife, so oh. you know what? I don't need don't need a man. Good no, girl, you don't Andrea. need a man. Well done. Well, do you know what you do need? $100 million. We're going to give you a ticket into tonight's Powerball. That could change your life, Andrea. That'll get you a man. <laughs> that definitely you definitely won't need one. Thank you so much. <laughs> Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Looking at people at the gym, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because you know what? Like you... 
I think the one piece of advice I could give you, the best thing about gyms is because there's so many mirrors, if you do want to look at someone or look at something in the room, <laughs> you can find the right spot and look through a mirror so you're not looking at them directly, if you know what I mean, Kate. So are you saying you can perv sneakily? So well, it's, I'm not <laughs> well, saying... Because that's what, it, that's what it sounds like you're saying. If you want to look at someone at the gym, you don't have to be obvious about it. Yeah. You can do it in a creepy kind of way if you find a corner and the right angle. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you are, and this happens quite a bit at gyms, but ogling at someone and looking at them directly and making them uncomfortable, it's horrible. And it happens yeah. quite a bit in gyms. Oh, right? I just don't think you should make eye contact generally I, yeah, in I, life. Well, it, it is. <laughs> at, at, at a gym, though, it is hard because there are so many people around. Yeah. This guy, Toby Addison, you got to feel for Toby because a woman come up and said, stop doing it. I'm sick of it. You keep staring at me and I'm over it. And Toby goes, look, I don't know what... Look, just settle down. It's okay. And unfortunately, <laughs> she got angry. Things got out of control. And a Toby then had to inform her, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. But I'm actually legally blind. <laughs> Toby tells the story, but it gets worse. It gets worse than that because she didn't believe him. So I, I was doing my exercises like a good gym lad. Mm -hmm. And um, my eyes just, when I'm concentrating especially, they will just fall wherever they want to. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I was just staring straight ahead. And unfortunately, there was a woman doing some exercises. Don't know what she was doing, whether it was like some squats or whatever, where, you know, you might be in a more vulnerable position, maybe. Yeah. Um, you don't want to be stared at. So, yeah, she came over to me and yeah. said something along the lines of, why do you keep staring at me? Stop, like, don't be so creepy. I was like, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm blind. Had my cane with me, it was folded up on my lap. Yeah. And yeah, she she didn't, she wasn't having any of it. Did that escalate? Did yeah, she... she said she'd go and get the manager. I don't think she ended up getting the manager because it was a really, really young girl, by the sounds of it. Right. She got caught in, backed into a corner a bit by this woman and asked me to leave. I was like, I'm literally blind. And I, I wasn't as confident. <laughs> they asked you to leave? Yeah, yeah they, they got me out of there. No way. Yeah, yeah. He got booted out of a gym, <laughs> legally blind. Because <laughs> she thought that he was being creepy. And they wouldn't believe him. And he said, look, I've got my cane here that was on his lap and that was folded up. And yeah. then you can actually, and they would just still didn't believe him and he got booted. But when they booted him out, did he, I mean, I, I don't mean to sound insensitive, but he could just walk into the door frame or something and prove, <laughs> like, see? Well, Kate, you don't need to do that to prove it, do you? Well, maybe. If you've, if you've got two young women at the gym, yeah. irate, mm. I you've know. got to do, do something. You've got, you know, you got to get extreme. I still do remember. Does anyone remember the Karen affair? It was years and years ago, and they were claiming the guy who was on work cover and had an accident at work and said that I'm le now legally blind, but oh. they were questioning whether he was or not because he was still getting payments. So what did, what did a Karen affair do? What, they send the cameras the, around? No, they dropped it? a pineapple out the front of his house, a, a $50 note. Oh, and out he comes, out he comes, out he comes with his cane, and he's he's, just, and then he just stops in front of the fifty, looks around and picks it up. Oh no! Dodgy. Tracy Grimshaw's got you, mate. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Kate, you got some goss for us. I do. I just got a couple of stories that we kind of need to get to before at the end of the show. Firstly, um, I'll start with Pierce Brosnan. The cops have been called to his house in LA. Oh, what's Pierce done? Well, he hasn't done anything, but apparently somebody um, has uh, broken into his neighbour's yard and decided to um, go to the toilet on the lawn. What? Um, yeah. Um, so uh, what, uh, that's just a, a, a whiz, or no, a, no, no. Well, I didn't want to say the word defecate. Oh. But that's what I have now. It's <laughs> breakfast. I thought they might have been having a quick piss. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thumbs up, Fitz. Thumbs up from Kate. Thumbs up, Fitz. Anyway, so that's yeah. happened next door. Um, he's uh, th then made his way onto Pierce's property. Yeah. Apparently the wife was at home, helped himself to the outdoor shower and um, cleaned, cleaned himself up oh. in, in uh, James Bond's outdoor um, 
shower. Oh, my God. Shake and not stir. No, thanks. <laughs> he didn't shake. Did he do, oh. did he do that? He shake. Or did he just leave a copy of Die Another Day? Because that was pretty too. Oh, you know well, that's I mean? not, <laughs> that not bad. <laughs> you guys are on fire. Why oh, do you leave, what you, else? you leave the best gear till 9 what o'clock? we got? Moonraker, Casino Royale. I reckon as soon as he did it, he went, oh, mamma mia. Because <laughs> he did mamma mia, it was rubbish. Oh. 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 Oh, and that was oh. rubbish. And that's, that's when the fun ended. Do you know what, At MDG? 9 o'clock on the dot, Thursday, the 22nd was, of June, the fun ended with I was, Matt. I was there the day that Matt DeGree got sacked. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Should have right. pulled the plug early. <laughs> um, okay, now ju- and then we ha- we have to cover this. MDG, you've obviously been covering this story in the news. It is worldwide news. Um, the people uh, who are in the submarine, mm. yes, um, down near the Titanic, and who are missing. Now I know it, it might sound strange that we're covering it in entertainment news, but we must talk about the billionaire who is on board, his stepson Brian. Now this is this is so interesting because Brian put up a post on Facebook basically saying you know my stepdad is down there or hoping to rescue him or just you know praying and yeah. crossing our fingers that thank everything's you for gonna... all your support so he's put up that post two hours later he's put up a post of him at a Blink One Eight Two concert. At the merch stand, not even in the crowd. At the merch stand, and he said, look, my parents, you know, well, well, my family have said to me that, you know, in difficult times you should go and do something that you you really love. It's what it's what they would want, and music has, has um, brought him through the tough times previously, then, so that's why he's there. The thing is, though, he's got... Co- I mean, naturally, naturally, he's copping a bit of flack. Yeah, of course. People have, um, you know, have this crazy idea that maybe going to a Blink-182 yeah. um, concert isn't what they would be doing if, <laughs> if their stepdad um, was missing. He's pulled down all of the posts uh, because his mum says um, it's best yeah, <laughs> son, Brian, you really come on. Put it away. Just an update on that, though. But he did receive a response, and Tommy was telling me about it. Tom, what, what was the response that he received? <laughs> Oh, that's right. Do you mean of the girl? <laughs> of the girl. A oh. girl thought he was quite cute. Yeah. And she she wrote... She forgot to put her clothes she, on. She you forgot to, to put her clothes on. You're right, yep. Kate. Um, and sent, sent a photo and uh, with the question, can I sit on you? Oh. And this guy, Brian, has He's... replied with, yes, please. <laughs> So he's very distracted. I at mean, the he's making he's making the most of his his moment. Yes, he is. Now, look, it's not for us Brian. to comment on what Brian should be doing, no. but the one person who <laughs> did feel the need to comment on it and put it on her uh, TikTok was Cardi B. Have a listen. Okay, so one of the billionaires that's missing from that submarine, their stepson, is at a concert, right? At a Blink One Eighty Two concert, and people is like, "Well, what is he supposed to do? Be sad at the house? Is he supposed to go look for himself? Yes, you're supposed to be at the house, sad. You're supposed to be." crying for me. You're supposed to be right next to the phone waiting to hear any updates about me. You're supposed to be constantly your mom and shit. Like, isn't it sad that you a billionaire and nobody gives a fuck about you? Like, that's crazy. I'd rather be broke. I'd rather be broke but knowing that I'm love. I don't oh. think Cardi B would rather be broke. Finally. <laughs> finally. Everyone's been waiting for Cardi I mean, B's that, response. You know what? Every big, like every big event in worldwide news... We need Cardi's hot take. <laughs> See, I just... <laughs> you hope the Blink-182 concert is worth it. That's the thing. They are... I mean, they've sold out their Australian tour. They've just called a fifth show in Melbourne. What's the resurgence? Oh, it's just no one's... We haven't seen them for such a long time. They okay. were a part of everyone's lives in the 90s and early noughties. Blink-182. Can we play some tomorrow, Tom? You bet. Well done, mate. You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Now, I don't think it matters uh, how good a parent you are. At some point throughout your entire parenting career, you are going to lose your child. Without a doubt. Hopefully they come back. But you are going to either lose them in the supermarket yep. or at the, the Royal, park. The Royal Easter Show is a big oh, one. Oh, yeah, the Easter Show. Oh, now you've got to write your, nut, their nut, your number down on their wrist <laughs> yeah. and hope someone reads it. I think that makes a lot of it's, sense. It's a great idea. I think it's very clever. Don't, But they say don't put their name on because that's a bit of 
that's stranger danger. And that brings me to the, this story about this woman who's who's um, uh, uploaded a video to TikTok, and she has given her top tips on how to find your kid if you do happen to lose them. Great. And that what what we tend to do is, for example, your kid and I know we did this when we were little. We would always well, I didn't because I was really well behaved. I was the best behaved of the four <laughs> children, but I was the eldest and would almost like parent the other little yeah, kids, yeah, yeah, you know, yes, like yes. Mm, Stuart, who's my brother. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Stop I, doing that, yeah. yeah. Oh my, Stuart, Stuart's being naughty again. Oh, it was that kind of thing, and they would run off in in Kmart or Big W and and hide in amongst the um uh, the railings and yeah. the racks and stuff. Yeah. So annoying. So you know annoying. how impressed my mum Heather would have been There's when nothing. she's got four kids in Big W chasing yeah. them around, and one of them's hiding and thinks it it's hilarious. <laughs> But when that does happen, parents tend just to call out names. Yeah. What this woman is saying you should do, and I was going through it in my head when I was reading the story before, and I felt slightly awkward and embarrassed because, firstly, I don't like to attract attention. But if you're not calling out the kids' names, so, for example, I've lost you, Fitzy, and yeah. I'm saying, Ryan! Yep. Ryan! Yeah. Get back here kind of thing. That's a trigger. Yeah, that's a trigger. That's you, my mum, yeah. You don't call the name because no one in the shop knows who Ryan is. No. Um, and it can also... Um, uh, well, the kid does. Give, the, stra- give the, the, the stranger who might be about to kidnap them, it gives them your name and they know that there's a kid, you know, by this right. name wandering around the supermarket or Big W. What you have to do is explain what they're wearing. That's the tip. <laughs> So you have so, to say, so, you uh, and this is what would made me really embarrassed. What? I think I'd rather my child be lost yeah. um, <laughs> than wander down the aisle of Big W and say, he's wearing a peach long sleeve um, oh, T-shirt. It says idols down the side, skinny <laughs> jeans and Nike shoes, bald Beard. What about, I know it doesn't sound like a child now, but so that's when you. I, yeah, but see, where I grew up, if my mum walked down the aisle going tight acid wash jeans, Dunlop volleys and a flannelette shirt, there'd be 80 kids that would walk out. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's a good one. You can't do that because then the kid doesn't understand that no, you're the there kid, as well. No, that, but it doesn't really matter because sometimes maybe the kid is actually hiding. Maybe yeah. the kid's being a bit of a naughty kid. Yeah. Not that they're naughty kids, of course, you know, every. <laughs> All kids are lovely and can do what they like. That, so, um, so that's similar to that when you're getting attacked by someone. If you yell out for help, no one will come and help you. You got to yell out fire, don't you? Oh, is that right? Yeah, you're supposed to yell out fire, and people will come. Okay, I had one of those things once upon a time with the, which is not helpful for finding children. A taser gun. You no had a taser. <laughs> I should have. Um, no, spray? one of those ones that um, that make the really loud noise. Oh, gotcha. But then I, I, I ne- I've never, I mean, I've never had to, never no. had to use it. A lot of people are, uh, carry around pepper spray now as well. I mean, I do in the office here, just if someone's For pissing Tommy. me off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does hurt, yeah. <laughs> Lee in Ramwick, you went missing at the Easter show. For how long, Lee? I did. About 40 minutes. Oh. I was four years old, so it was the 80s. There was no mobile phones, and my dad ran around the Royal Easter show. It was the showbag hall specifically. Oh, of course. Saying, has anyone seen a four-year-old girl? Yeah. And there was about 800 four-year-old girls. Yeah, that's the thing. See, not a bad place for you as a kid to go missing, though, Lee. Or were you freaking out? I don't remember. I mean, I'm sure I was loving yeah. it, but I just know Mum used it against Dad in fights forevermore, saying, yeah. remember when you lost Lee? Oh. <laughs> yeah, you that, can't be trusted that, taking the kids to the show. The moment that you <laughs> realise that your kids aren't around and you're yelling yeah. out and there's no reply yeah. is what your heart just skips yeah. a beat. The, the blood kind of drains from your body and then as soon as you find them, yeah. you start screaming <laughs> at them. <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> yeah, he, he scared the life uh, out of me. And then another, fa- a parent will, another parent will bring them over and you'll go, ah, oh, thank you so much, thanks. Yeah. Wait till they're 20 metres away. Where the hell did you go? Yeah, yes, in the car, you <laughs> Wait till we get home. Anna in Lane Cove, where did you lose your child, Anna? Um, I lost him in the house. What, oh, what, no. what was he playing hide and seek, Anna? Well, so we had just moved into a house and we had some trade people in the house, So, but it was late, it was about six o'clock, and he had what we thought gone to the toy room. And then mm. where I got up and I started looking, saying, Does anyone know where he is? Does anyone know where Hugo is? And we're walking around, the front door's open, the front gate's open, oh, we're looking through the house, 
Uh, we can't find him. He's three years old. So we start calling neighbours, yep. calling family, driving up and down the street. We've called the police oh. by this stage. It's getting close to seven o'clock. Yeah. Uh, we've got police dogs in the house. We've got neighbours coming through. We've got um, everybody's checking inside cupboards. Oh, in case Anna. Oh, and eventually out. about quarter to nine, they had helicopters ready to take off because we were not far from water. Yeah. They've walked up to the shop, all of that. They, another police guy arrives and he comes up to me at the front gate and he says, how many children do you have? I said, one. He said, could you come inside, please? And I come inside and he pulls the pillows off the lounge. So he's tucked himself under the covers of the lounge and he's sound asleep. <laughs> that is <So> gold! <laughs> I couldn't be any more embarrassed and more pleased oh. at the same time. Oh. Yeah, but see the covers, you would have had the police dogs, everyone's Where, there, they still the didn't dog find work him. It out? Oh. No, the sniffer dogs, nothing. They 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 you know, you gave them some clothes and said smell the clothes and walk through <laughs> they walked through the house, they went all around, they were down at the water, everything. Oh, there was nothing how awful. There for would you. be a moment too as the cops and the rescue crew are just walking out of the house just shaking their head at you, Anna, going, Oh, you should have found him. Well, yes and no. They actually were so great. They said to me, this is the best result. They said, you don't know how many times we have. We don't get a good result. So we actually don't care. We're actually really happy. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. Anna, (laughs) great Anna. It's not Anna's fault. The police are the professionals. They've been brought in. (laughs) What what great detectives they make. What's going on with the police dogs? (laughs) The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. We like the life improver. How good's the life improver? Oh yeah, the life improver. Your life improver! With super advice and super returns, Aware Super is super helpful. Find out how Aware Super can help you get more from your super today. Read the PDS and TMD at aware.com.au. Everyone goes into the running for the $100 million draw and Powerball tonight. Also, a bottle of double chin gin to give away Australian mm-hmm. Distilling Co. We need you to improve our lives. Sue in Lane Cove. Sue, bitty doobity, what have you got for us? Hi. Um, okay, so when you, um, you know, got makeup on your face and you go to get changed yep. and you lift your top off yep. and you always get makeup on the inner collar of your top. Yes. The life hack for that is to spray a little bit of hairspray on the inner collar of your top. Yeah. And when you take it off over your head, you won't get makeup on it. What? So it's, really? it's it deflects the makeup. It's like a shield, Sue. Yeah, it's like a shield to the makeup. Okay, do you, on your top. do you spray that hairspray on when you put that top on in the morning or do you have to do it just before you're going to remove it? Like just before you're going to remove it, but let it just set a little bit and yeah. then take you, it off. Can I, can I give you a celeb that I always get makeup on my shoulder with when I hug him? I know who you're going to say. You know, you know who I'm going to say? Well, it's not, not Tom, Carlos, do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Who? Dickie? Dickie, yeah. yeah Richard, yeah, Richard Wilkins. So, I mean, Richard has to put makeup on every morning for Channel 9, right? But he just leaves it on all day. Mm. So when you see Dickie, and he's such a, he's like the paddle pop lion, you go up and you give him a huge <laughs> hug. You love him, and he nuzzles into you, and then you get back home and you realise... And when your wife says, well, what's been going on here? Why is there lipstick on your I'm, collar? I'm having an affair with Richard Wilkins. <laughs> <laughs> Nev in Hartarman, life hack. How you doing, mate? Top of the morning to you guys. Hey, Nevi. Hey, hey, hey. My life uh, improver hack is when you go on holiday, bring all of your older crappy socks, jocks and T-shirts. So when you're on holidays and they get dirty, you just throw them straight in the bin and then for coming home, you have a lot more space in your suitcase for new gear. Oh, Nick. It's so... It's but not the, bad. But it's then brilliant, then mate. It's, it's so good. So then you're not bringing home shitty, dirty watches. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. You throw it out before you come home. But what about all the people who go on holidays and wear their best gear so they can Instagram the whole thing? Yeah, Nick. Yeah, well, if they want to be on Instagram, they can do it. But, you know, they're sort of idiots when you think about it. That's that's it. Yes, yes. Here, when you're over there, get all your, like, your European T-shirts or your... Cheap knockoff toy uh, here, you know. <laughs> you bin tang singlets. Well done, Nev. Let's go to Mervet in Cobbity. Life hack, Mervet. Hey guys, yeah, I've got a sneaky one for you. If you're trying to hide some things um, around the house from the kids, or even, you know, 
um, your husband or something, um, <laughs> you empty out a mayo jar, yep. you paint it on the inside in white so yep. it kind of looks full, and then you can stash your stuff in there and hide it from people. No one's going to look in the mayo jar. Oh, no, goodness. they're not. So that you can keep brilliant. it in the pantry or the fridge. No one. Genius, right? Well, what, it sounds like you've done this, Mervet. What are you hiding from your <laughs> husband? Have. Um, we've got a lover of Oreos in the house, so I've tried to keep the Oreos away from everyone. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That is genius. You are leading at the moment. Let's go to Gus in North Sydney. Life hack, Gus. You know, legends, thanks for having me on. I hope this is helpful. No worries. Um, you should always keep a small driver's licence size mirror in the car handy. So if you ever get pulled over, the cops ask for your licence. Just hand them the mirror, they'll get confused, and they'll arrest themselves. <laughs> I can't believe you bothered to call, mate. Gus Gus is doing gear. He's doing gear on the Fitzy and Ripper show. Gussie, I don't mind it. It is quite funny, but we're going to have to give it to Mervet this morning. Mervet, you are our winner. But no worries, you get a bottle of double chin gin. But Sue, Nev, Mervet, Gus, you all get a ticket for tonight's $100 million Powerball draw. We want you guys or one of you to win that. Yeah. Do they have to split it with us, though? It's like if you you went into a... A scratchy with someone. Yeah. Yeah. If you gift something like that, do they have to share it with you? Do you know what? We give away Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie merch or anything like that. I'd be happy with just a piece of merch if someone's won 100 mil. You want a bit more, though, don't you, Kate? Absolutely. I want 50. Well done, guys. We like the life improver. How good's the life improver? Oh, yeah, the life improver. Your life improver! Fitzy and Weaver with Kate Ritchie. Hey, that's a secret. Podcast password. If you want to get your hands on stacks of great prizes, just head over to our Instagram stories at Fitzy Whipper Kate and enter this password. Today's password is... Mamma Mia. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. I want to I wanna open this up and I'm, I, I'm intrigued by this... What is the worst pain from a sting or a bite? 13, 20, 4, 10. Give me a call and tell me. Because you know what fascinates me? Stingrays, right? Oh, okay. Yes. So stingrays. It's in the name. And obviously, Steve, we know the story of Steve Irwin as well. And, uh, you know, the odds of that actually happening and the sting going through his heart were very, very high, yeah, were I very was low. Always confused with that. So not not every stingray has that kind of barb, no. does it? Well, see, well, they, yeah, I think they do, and that's their defence oh. mechanism. And there's, I I think there is poison or there's venom in the sting. Now I, I, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> there's a couple of guys who have been fishing. They went fishing and they caught a stingray. Now my first thoughts when you see a stingray. They're quite menacing to look at because you can see the sting. No, but I think they're beautiful. Do you? I think they're beautiful. Have you ever seen Moana? Oh, yeah, no, that is a great movie. Moana with the the stingrays and then Nan becomes the... Yeah, animated one who talks. Yeah, okay, all right. (laughs) Okay. So, so these two guys, they've caught a stingray. Usually everyone would get, you know, take the hook off and send them back in. But this guy goes, oh, awesome. Can you take a photo of me with the stingray? So he's holding the stingray by the sides of the stingray. So yeah. the sting's hanging down the bottom. Okay, that's Obvious, like the tail kind of obviously thing. Obviously we know what's going to happen. Listen to this. A California round stingray. Ow! Ah! Ah! All right. You got your finger? No. Huh? Stung you? Yeah. So apparently the pain from the sting of a stingray is really, really painful. Well, it sounded but like it. That sounds like that sounds like a movie with Steve Carell or something. Yeah. Don't you reckon? Well, it's even like a, it, it does. It, <laughs> it does. does or sound ben like Stiller Steve. or someone like. Oh! But it's the you know remember when you used to get a bee sting as a kid and oh, you yeah. knew that the sting was in there and you are freaking out because you know that it's going to be itchy and there's going to be pain. It's yeah, the pain in the future. Where um, at the at the house I grew up in, we used to get those little green. Um, like little uh, bull ants, like yes. and, they were, and, yeah. and they're not very big these yeah. ants, but they've got the iridescent kind of green on the top of them, and oh, oh, oh yeah, they're yeah. sitting on the or playing oh. on the grass, and they are just itchy for hours. But I wouldn't say that's painful necessarily. No, I don't and think I've ever been uh, had a bite or a sting by anything crazy. What's the worst? Let's go to Mark in Pimble. Give us one, Mark. 
Yeah, I got um, a tentacle of a Portuguese man of war wrapped around my ankle. Oh, my And that was the most intense white pain I've ever had. So did that go all the way up your leg, Mark, or was it just around your ankle? Basically around the ankle, but I couldn't walk for about uh, two weeks, um, oh. courtesy of it. Oh um, it's got so much poison, and it's just insane. Did you... Um, could you see a mark... Mark or no? It was just the, the the intense pain on the inside of your leg. No, no, it was. Uh, it looked like a little stitched line around my ankle. Wow, that's incredible! And did it blow so, up? It swel- did it, oh, was yes. it swelled like an elephant. Swollen? <laughs> was it? Was there a moment that you could have lost your leg, Mark? Or what were they saying? I don't think they got to that level of concern, yeah. um, but it was literally, it's the most intense poison, and it scared the bejesus out of uh, everyone around me. I was a kid at the time, mm. so mm. Oh. it was, uh, yeah, a worry. Good start, Mark. Jellyfish, let's go Lisa and Caring Bar. What was your worst thing? Um, a stingray. I had a stingray get me as I was paddleboarding on the port hacking. Oh. And, and does, does, the, does the sting stay in you, or does it pop out, Lise? No, they... The, well, the, the actual sting sensation definitely stays with you. Yeah, yeah. I've had children, and it was worse than childbirth, oh, I can tell you. It was Lise. so painful. And I was by myself, so I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm in the middle of sport hacking, thinking, what am I going to do? Yeah. And thank goodness I had a friend that came to the rescue and took me to the hospital, and there were six of us, all with stingray bites in the hospital. They're like... What is going on in the Port Hacking? <laughs> the Stingrays just got together and go, we just got to get them back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We've had We're enough. a bad day. Taryn in French's forest, worst sting or uh, bite? It wasn't me, it was my husband, mm. but also a stingray on the foot. His um, foot went like double the size in a minute. Oh, my God. And he was in yeah. immense pain? He was yelling out like the guy we did before? <laughs> yeah, almost. Um yeah, and we were in um, Hawkesbury, so not very many hospitals around. Yeah. So um, Triple Zero just told us to put him in the hottest shower that he can stand um, and just rinse it continuously with hot, hot water to get rid of the poison. Oh, and eventually we went to hospital. Water. He was on morphine. Yep. Oh, morphine. Oh, yuck. my goodness. All right, let's go to Melissa in Castle Hill. What did you get bitten by, Melissa? Um, I got bitten by a wombat. <laughs> What? Okay, so, so I thought so, I thought wombats ran away from you. What on earth were you doing to be bitten by a wombat? Were, were you riding it? <laughs> no, no, no. I was only a kid, and um, I was at Featherdale Wildlife Park, oh, yeah. and you know how they sell those little cones with the um, grass inside it. Yeah, 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 My yeah. parents bought one of those to feed the um, oh, animals and that's stuff. Cute. And I didn't have my hand fully flat, so it bit me right on my left. Middle finger. I've still got a scar. Oh, did it? Did it break the skin? Were you bleeding? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Long story short, my um, dad sort of kind of had to bang the wombat on the head just to let it release my finger. <laughs> oh no! So must have been yeah, I remember screaming. it just running like I, I was running it under cold water. It was. So painful, Dad's and it was like red. Now it's just like a faint white line because it's been there for yeah. years. Yeah, you have a run in like that with a. a well, usually it's a dog, isn't yeah. it? Not a wombat. Oh, no. But you have this irrational fear of that animal for the rest of just, your life. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just picturing Dad in jail. What are you in for, mate? Ah, oh, bloody punched a wombat. Fifty <laughs> and Wimper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com. Dot au